We've got about 350 employees. We were at about 19 million revenue last year. We're on pace to do about 26, 27. Any kind of pain point that we come across, we just try to find a solution. And that's what we did. It's tough to just win with janitorial. You have to offer so you'll make more profits in if you become a single source solution, now you do more business with that current client. It's in their best interest to trust and build a service portfolio with one client than to go work with 10 or 15 different vendors. What's going on, guys? I'm joined today by Ricky Regalado. Ricky is crushing it in Illinois. He has his business. He's been doing this for over a decade now, and he's absolutely crushing it. So, um, Ricky, super excited to learn a bit more about you today. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate you. Absolutely. So for starters, I always like to just dive into the background of kind of what got you into the home service space and just what businesses you're currently a part of, if you don't mind sharing. Yeah, man. So we are somewhat in the home service space, but we are definitely more commercial. Uh, Rosalado is my cousin's last name and my last name. That name came to be about 10 years ago when we got into the commercial cleaning space. Um, it was not intended. I had no cleaning experience. I had no business ownership experience. Neither did my wife, neither did my cousin. But our our opportunity came from a cousin who had a franchise cleaning company. And he was moving to Mexico and wanted to keep the business in the family and kept, kept nagging us for two years. Every Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving, Easter, I, you know, guys, I'm moving to Mexico. I want you guys to keep the business. I worked so hard to, to establish it. And, and we did it. After two years of constant nagging, we're like, screw it. Let's do it. And we, we took a 40K loan out. We bought the franchise from him, um, but quickly knew that the franchise space was not for us. And we sold the entire franchise back in 2015. And we started from scratch. And that's really when Rosalado, uh, the, the commercial cleaning company, was born. Awesome. Okay. So it was very early on you realized you don't want to go the route of franchising. Very early. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, we we took the training. We understood the industry. We learned a lot from the franchise organization. I pay homage to a lot of our education came from them. But growth and scalability uh, just wasn't in the cards uh, working for that franchise. So we went off, ventured off on our own, did it the right way. We sold every account back to the franchise, franchisor, and we just hit the ground running and started winning our own business and growing our own, our own brand. That's awesome. And at this point, I mean, you guys have scaled to, is it 17 states or? So right now we are in 27 states. Um, and again, that's not by us marketing. We're not marketing in those states. We have clients from Chicago that have taken us because they're growing. So when they grow, they bring us with and we we manage the facilities and all the, the janitorial services for them. Awesome. OK, so I definitely want to dive a little deeper into that and kind of how you guys went about expanding, whether you open up new locations or, you know, you guys are traveling a decent bit before jobs. Um, but before we do dive into that, what I really want to focus on, because clearly a big portion of what you guys do is focused on commercial work. First off, do you mind kind of sharing what the size of the business currently is, like in terms of team members and like annual revenue? Yes, yeah, so we've we've got about 350 employees. Uh, I say like seven, eight hundred because I also count the employees of our affiliate partners and our subcontractors because they're they're part of the family. They're part of the team. Uh, but we have yeah, 350 rolls, a lot of employees. We have. Uh, about 80 subcontractors, and we call them affiliate partners across the country. Because um, every time we go into a market, we're teaming up with local smaller cleaning contractors. And our revenue, we did, we were at about 19 million revenue last year. So this year, we're, we're on pace to do about 26, 27. Wow, that's awesome. And that was something I wasn't even aware is that you guys are working with subcontractors as well. So not only are you bringing on employees and you know supporting them, but you're also supporting a lot of small businesses, it sounds like. Yeah, man, that's I, I've, I've I've tried to do the best I can to give back, man. That's uh, the software that we built is is for that reason alone too. Is it's a operations management and sales software for the commercial cleaning industry, but the the prime piece to it is the connecting the prime and subcontractors to share and grow their business with each other. Because uh, up until now, that was difficult for me to find subcontractors. So any kind of pain point that we come across, we just try to find a solution, and that's what we did. Cool, cool. So now you guys have done about 19 million last year, projected to do about 26 million. This is all at this point, all commercial work, correct? Yeah, commercial work. Uh, it's and it's janitorial, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, snowplow, uh, window washing, day porter services, supply ordering management for the cleaning for the clients. Uh, it, all in the above. So we are we have pivoted into more of a facility services 
uh, company. And then a lot of our, we do concrete coating, epoxy, that we do for a lot of homes as well. And then we do like remodeling, like, like construction work, um, but mostly for commercial. The, the home service part, I would say, is probably the, our carpet cleaning and our concrete and epoxy coating. Gotcha. Okay. So would you say your strategy then initially was to just expand the amount of clients you're working with, but over time you started offering more services to make each customer worth more? Was that kind of your strategy going into it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you nailed it. Uh, it doesn't matter the volume of clients. To us, it's the volume of services because, unfortunately, the janitorial space, man, it's it's a tight margin business. And the larger cleaning companies in our space get, the less are the more competitive their pricing is going to be. So it's tough to just win with janitorial. You have to offer ancillary services. So you'll make more profits in carpet, floor care, window, special. Anything special services, if you become a single source solution, now you do more business with that current client and you do well by them because they only want to pay one bill too. So it's in their best interest to trust and build a service portfolio with one client than to go work with 10 or 15 different vendors. That makes a lot of sense. And I noticed on your website, which was really cool, you guys kind of had like a timeline of your progress over the years. One of the things I noticed was you guys are actually mentioning how many services you're you're offering at that time. So it went from you know a handful of services to offering five to ten and so on and so forth. So for a new business owner, would you say they should right off the rip offer multiple services or start with one, become as you know the best at that service they possibly can, and then start to expand? Yeah, no, it's a great question, man. I would say start with in in. Again, I'm going to be selfish and say start with cleaning, start with janitorial, right? Or, you know, residential. And it's the easiest way for you to learn that trade, right? Because these are all trades. Learn that trade first. Then add, you know, I would start with carpet cleaning. It's, you know, there's a lot of training out there. There's a lot of ways to learn that service. Then if you learn carpet, it's easy to learn tile and grout because it's the same piece of equipment. Once you learn those two, you should learn VCT strip and wax. Like that's the 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 path we took. And I say that because it's better if you learn to do the service yourself, because by default, you'll learn how long it takes to do the service. And then by default, you'll learn how to price that service, not saying that you have to do it forever. But then when you go to team up with other contractors to help you, right, provide services at scale, you'll know what to price it out at and be competitive and and be fair. You'll be able to pay a, a good partner because uh, at the end of the day, you can't do it all yourself. So but you should learn them yourself because you won't get anything, you know, uh, over on you, right? As a business owner, it's, I've seen many try to offer so many services, but I'm like, man, you don't even know what it takes to do it. So how can you monitor quality? And then how do you know if you're getting the right price? That's a very good point. If you were trying to outsource it to another, you know, to a subcontractor, but you don't actually understand how, you know, to go about that project in the first place, then you might be underbidding yourself. You might be over projecting how long it might take. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it. So the best way, as you're saying, the best way to understand it well is to do it yourself first. Correct. 100%. Awesome. So what's very interesting, like we mentioned, is a large portion of your work is commercial. How do you guys actually go about getting commercial work in the first place? Like, do you have like a, a handful of strategies that you guys really hone in on? Is it, I guess, can you kind of share that marketing plan with me? Yeah, so I am probably the worst at any sales and marketing when it comes to we we don't have an actual strategy or plan other than social media and relationship building. And uh, what I mean by that is just we have a big network. I, 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 you know, shake hands, kiss babies as much as I can around the local Chicago area. Uh, we have a great website. We have a great social media presence. So indirectly. Other clients know us, right? Or the, I, I always joke, but I would go into a lot of networking events and I'm like, hey man, I'm Ricky the Cleaner. You're not going to meet too many Ricky the Cleaners. So I can provide multiple services for you. Um, but the brand identity on, on social and the brand identity on a line indirectly is marketing for us, but we really don't have much outbound. Not to say we're not going to start building it. We are, we have plans this year to finally build a business development strategy plan, you know, outbound, inbound, uh, do some some Google campaigns and then LinkedIn campaigns to better position ourselves uh, just because the way we've grown got us to this point. That's not going to be the way that we grow to get us to the next stage of growth. Um, so we're developing it, man. So I don't really have a secret sauce on sales. I'll just tell you that I'm always storytelling and sharing what we do to anybody I come across. Really? So 
even in the early days, you guys didn't have so much of a marketing plan. It was more so getting out there and speaking with people. Yep. yep. I've never done, I, I mean, I have a website, but we really do much SEO. We don't have never done a Google ad campaign, never done a Facebook ad campaign. I mean, commercial is different. Uh, to me, video is, is our selling point. Our, our content is what stands us apart. Um, cause yeah, just yesterday we got like a 65,000 square foot walkthrough cause they saw a video on, on LinkedIn. So then they reached out, somebody knew somebody else. And now we've got like a ten, twelve thousand dollars a month bid to go do a walkthrough for next week. But it came from there. Um, you know, we're not we're not on the first page of Google. Uh again, probably not the things that should be saying right now, but we're gonna work on that. That that is something that is going to be a part of our strategy though. But it's not what got us to this point, to be honest. Okay. And no, I, I think it's valuable that you say that because a lot of people are probably thinking um, you know, I shouldn't be advertising my business because I'm not even on the first page of Google yet, or that's kind of like a limiting belief to them. But you guys have gotten to such a large scale. And until now, you haven't really even cared about Google, it sounds like. And you still managed to get to this point. But we know that it's important, though, Michael, right? Like it, it is on our literally top three things to do is improve our SEO, improve our website. Like at, at scale, you need to have these levers ready to pull. Um, again, we got here on instinct and just by grit and like getting out there and branding. So now we got to back the brand up. Now let's put the brand on a whole nother platform. Uh, cause we kind of did the harder part, the harder part first, right? I mean, the other pieces is things that we can hire professionals to come in and get us where we need to get to. For sure. Okay. Well, that's awesome that you say that because content is king. So the fact that video content is really moving the needle for you guys and got you guys to this oh, point. Yeah. And then obviously you have these other levers that now that you implement it, I mean, you guys are probably going to blow up this year, but um, just video content alone has worked so well for you guys. I guess, do you guys kind of have a strategy when it comes to social media? Are you guys doing fancy edits? Are you just posting raw videos? Yeah. So we're doing both. I mean, we have a full-time videographer, a full-time, uh, the studio, we have a studio in the office. That's how much we believe in content as we are producing something every single day. Uh, and what we were doing before was like training videos for our staff. We were doing our own QC videos, right? How to videos for the staff. That is because we have a lot of people in the field across the country. Video is the only best way to communicate with them at times. So we did it for us, which then now serves us well when others see it. And, uh, and I'll tell you, man, even clients, we've had clients come up and say, hey, could you build a, a training program for our in-house cleaning staff? Because they only use us for a couple things here and there. So we, we have become a knowledge base for some of our clientele. And that knowledge base, now we can cut it up a hundred different ways and use it to promote us as a business. And then also for the other brands, right? We have a contracting and maintenance division. We have an epoxy division. We have a floor care division. We have a you know, a software company, we have a podcast, all those different cuts help us continue to build brand identity and be a topic of discussion with clients and potential clients. Gotcha. Okay. And so with these different departments within the service business, do you guys have different accounts for each one? Are you getting traffic from each of them? Or is it like one account you guys are focused on really growing? Uh, I mean, every we're trying to dedicate now and build the team out. Like literally we have like our goal for this year is to have an entire content team, uh, one for each channel, because you do see when one channel gets more attention, it, it it does better than the other ones, and it's hard to keep up six different channels. So we are bringing in multiple people to manage um, the channels, because everything's going to be different. Content that you we do for Rosalato is going to be different than the content we do for the podcast. It's going to be different than the content that we do for the software company. Uh, so not one can do all. So we're learning that. As we speak. Gotcha, okay. I guess up until this point, you, you had one for each department, essentially, just not too much focus in any one of them. But now you have, your strategy is to completely have someone dedicated to each channel. 100%. Yep. Cool. Okay. So my biggest takeaway so far, which I actually really like, because a lot of people have that mindset, like, you know, obviously, I'm huge on digital marketing. That is my whole thing. But at the end of the day, building relationships is everything. So it sounds like a big portion of your success is coming from the fact that you're so good at building relationships with people. No, for sure. But I mean, again, yeah, digital marketing, man, uh, you have to compliment. Like uh, we know we've gotten where we've gotten to, but marketing has, I don't like to say that we don't, we don't do any marketing because a lot of the things we do is a form of marketing 
but now we want to be intentional. I think that's different when people do marketing and they don't even know they're doing it sometimes, but then there's the difference of you're intentionally doing marketing. You have a campaign, you have and you know, an accountability, an accountability checklist of things that you're going to do to create a return on your investment and your efforts. That's where you start to step it up and, you know, and you budget appropriately. So uh, again, building relationships got us here, but yeah, man, digital marketing for sure is you, you compliment that you said it, it, it allows for recipe for immense, immense success. 100%. Well, great. So you guys are, you know, like I said, in the past, you've done great at building relationships and that's helped you guys a lot with sales. I guess at this point, let's just say you guys receive an opportunity. Someone wants to work with you guys or requesting a quote, requesting more information on your services. Can you kind of break down your sales process and how you guys really differentiate yourselves amongst these other companies that they're probably speaking with? Yeah. So we, so a lot of, you know, some of the software that we built with Route is, is a sales tool. So ultimately our lead generation will come in through uh, Salesforce because we use Salesforce as our CRM. As soon as that lead is created into an opportunity, it gets pushed into route. So on our calendar, we'll have our walkthrough because the, the tool is a walkthrough builder. So everything we do is based on walkthroughs. So we can create walkthroughs for anybody around the country for our, for Rosalato. So when they, they get alerted that there's a walkthrough, that means that there's a hot lead. There's a hot appointment that they need to get out to and perform a walkthrough. The minute they perform that, that information, we capture photos, square footage, hot points, everything in the mobile application. That gets pushed to the home office. The home office then gets this to do a bid. They're working through our bidding calculator. They then create the proposal. That proposal is sent off and there's an e-signature formality to it. So we can go from a walkthrough in Charlotte to a closed proposal here in Chicago in hours, all in the same day. So that technology has allowed us to close deals faster um, and at a higher rate because everything's there, right? Our, our contract service agreement, our proposal, the pictures, the scope of work, the measurements, the cleaning times, everything is automated. So then we're, we're literally firing off proposals uh, within hours of a walkthrough. So from what I'm understanding, you guys have in some cases subcontractors multiple states away from you where you guys aren't, you know, you don't have your physical location, but you have subcontractors there that they receive a request to go out, do a walkthrough. They're going to complete that, gather information, put it into the software, relay that to you. And then you guys are actually the ones composing the proposal and trying to close a deal. Uh, yes and no. Yes to, I love that you said that because yes, that does happen. Um, that is the, the power of using great partners and contractors because at the t at, they're, they're the boots on the ground sometimes. And if there's an opportunity, they can go do it because of technology. Uh, but in, in a lot of cases, it is our, you know, we have, self-employed regional managers in like seven different states. They perform a lot of walkthroughs. But yes, the other part is the subcontractors, right? Where some cool stuff that we've we've uh, fostered is relationships where subs can't maybe afford to win a $50,000 a month contract, but we can. They'll perform the walkthrough, get all the notes and the pictures and the data, submit it to our platform. We then look at it, put the proposal together, and we sub it right back to them. So the power of they win because we win because they win, right? And again, like it's tough. Well, I've been there when you're small and you know you only do fifty thousand a month in revenue, but yet you have an opportunity because of your great relationship that you built with a certain client, and you have to say no because you just can't afford the payroll and afford the net terms. A great prime partner will allow you to do that and win that business and then start to elevate the the amount of capacity that you have as a small cleaning company. 100%. What you're saying actually makes a lot more sense because, you know, these opportunities, I'm sure a lot of times it's a lot of money on the table and to kind of put that outcome into someone else's hands could be very risky, but by keeping it in-house, like your team members are going out and doing it. Um, you have more control over the situation. And I'm sure I, I don't know how much data there is, but I'm sure you guys probably see a higher close rate in those opportunities. Oh yeah. Yeah, a lot of good, there's a lot of data. And the cool thing too, man, is it's not about just that win that day. Like you may not win that bid or proposal, but the, but by gathering the data collection that we do, like it's so easy when they do call back in six months or a year. Hey, I know you were out here last year to do a, a walkthrough and, you know, we, we decided to go a different way, but you know, we need a special service. The current contractor that we have can't perform the tiling grout or the VCT strip and wax. Would you be able to send somebody out to give us, you know, do a walkthrough and give us a quote? You should be surprised. You'd love the answer that we get when we're like, there's no need to. We already documented that in the first walkthrough. So here, let me send you a proposal in five minutes. And they're just like, wait, what? 
you don't have to come back out here? I'm like, no. The purpose of our first walkthrough was to gather all the data and gather all the photos and square footage so that in the case that you do need us to perform an additional service, uh, we, we can get it done in minutes. And then boom, you're booked and you're out there. Because again, sales is a, is a game of time as well. 100%. I'm sure that's a really good awakening for a lot of people. And especially for most of the viewers, they're, they're offering residential pressure washing services for the most part. But I've noticed this a lot where people are spending two, three days sending quotes out to people that really should take 30 minutes, if that, but they're just procrastinating and focusing on the wrong stuff typically. And so what happens is they send the quote and it turns out the customer already purchased the service from another company. So I think that's a really good awakening for a lot of people. Speed is everything, whether it's commercial or residential. If you're able to get the quotes back to people as efficiently as possible, as quickly as possible, that alone will probably increase your close rate a lot. Yeah. And I'll tell you, man, something for the, for the listeners and the audience that are more so home service and they're probably listening like, man, I don't really do commercial. So how am I going to even win a commercial contract? I would tell you and I would challenge everybody, find a commercial cleaning contractor in your area. Go have lunch, talk shop. You're both in the same industry. You do things a little different, but that doesn't mean you can't learn the commercial side. Uh, you know, and then a commercial company also needs home service people as well. Right. So you should have partners in all these different trades, especially commercial, because home service company, I, I've done this, some home services before. And when we did, that owner of that company happened, happened to be a property manager, right? Happened to be a facilities director, happened to be a procurement person that handles commercial cleaning contracts. And they, they had business to give us. So the fact that we provided that service or knew somebody that did allowed it to stay within my you know, in the palm of my hands because they want to do business with people they like. So if you're a great home service provider and you have great clientele that may happen to be a part of the commercial space, make sure they know that you can service commercial. It may not have to be you, but you have a partner that does and they don't need to know that it's not a sister company. It could be a sister company. And then it gets you to open up those doors to get the opportunity to get bigger and uh, grow. 100%. Yeah, that's great. A lot of people you know, they have that mindset that everyone around them is in competition with them. In reality, everyone can rise together and support each other. So, um, you know, go out, have some lunch, talk shop a bit. You'll probably learn a lot and potentially, you know, have some type of partnership where they can send you work, you can send them work. And, um, you know, you can do Correct. that with probably many companies in your area too. Awesome. So something very interesting I'm starting to think about as you mentioned this is you guys are working with a lot of subcontractors and you said the customer doesn't even need to know that it's not necessarily your company that's going out doing the work. How do you not necessarily hide the fact, but I guess um, make it so it's not clearly some other company, you know, with a different logo, different branding going out doing the job, if that makes sense. No, well, actually, I lead with it. Uh, again, if you if you guys follow my channel, if you guys follow the podcast or follow the software that we've created, uh, I empower the industry by working together intentionally. So my anytime I send a partner, they know that it's a partner and it's another cleaning company that's coming because they've earned the right to wear their own logo. They are who they are. They're working in conjunction with us to provide that that company um, the best service they can. And sometimes the best in class service is a local cleaning contractor. They know the space better. They know the area better. They've got uh, personnel in that area better than me here in Chicago. So I lead with it. I say, you know, your money should stay in your local area. I'm going to do that by allowing a smaller contractor to work with me in my network um, and level them up and provide you the best service I can. So we, from day one, they know it's not Rosalato that's coming in. It's a fellow affiliate partner and a subcontractor. Mm, okay, gotcha. You had mentioned like you don't even need to share the fact that it's a sister company. So I was curious if maybe you guys kind of hid the fact and had them represent your own company in some way. But what you're saying, honestly, is way better because not only are you is there no like hide the fact with their customers, um, but also it shows that you guys are being genuine and, you know, you guys are supporting small local businesses. Uh, you guys aren't trying to hide the fact that you're just subcontracting it and you're being straight up about that probably, you know, really helps differentiate you guys from other companies. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. When I met the sister company, it was like, they may not know that you haven't even created a partnership with somebody, but it's like, they don't need to know that because you're about to work on that partnership right now to get to get the, the service that they need in that area. Okay. I see what you mean. So, you know, maybe like your first job, for example, you don't have some official partnership really secured or, or worked out yet, like the exact details, but you can still go through with it and start to kind of gain experience of what the partnership would look like. Yep. That's exactly it. 
Gotcha. Okay. That makes way more sense then. So I appreciate you for clarifying that. Cool. So the next thing I'd like to dive into then is when it comes to team, you have managed, um, I'm not sure what exactly your role plays when it comes to the team members and you know what departments you're really uh, you know very focused on. But at this point, I'm sure you've managed plenty of people yourself. What would you say is one of the, or multiple, but I guess the base lessons you've learned uh, so far in terms of managing people? Man, I would say the way you lead people, um, not everybody's ready to be a manager or ready to be a leader. You can't assume they are, you know, and I've made mistakes in the past where you think just because somebody is great at their job that they're going to be a great leader for that same job. Um, so asking people what they actually want, what's the next step in their career, um, what's a path forward for them to grow with your, within the organization, because I didn't ask in the beginning and I just assumed and I was like, man, this person's awesome. We're going to make sure you're going to be in charge of this. Being in charge is not always what people want. So like asking those questions of what, what is it that that person wants? And, you know, you're looking for this new role and there's this new opportunity that came up in the company. We're growing. Where do you want to grow with us? It, 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 it speaks volumes to that person because they're going to appreciate that you ask them. But at the same time, don't be surprised if they're like, Psh, I love the way I love my job. I don't need to lead an entire department. <laughs> so I've put people in the wrong role sometimes because I didn't ask. So that that's, been something big where have that, that huddle up, have that, you know, quarterly meeting with, with somebody, even though you think you talk all the time and you're always, you know, with, with each other and you feel like you're always connected. It's the type of connection you're having. And the intention behind the meeting sometimes is a little bit different when you actually are asking them things about themselves and where they want to go. Um, so yeah, just being mindful of those, those kind of things. Okay. So what you're saying is, um, obviously you probably speak with these team members very often, but it's not common that you're talking about goals, uh, you know, life goals, career goals, things of that nature. So what you're saying is every so often just kind of have that one-on-one -on -one conversation where you talk about goals, uh, where they see themselves going progress and just making sure you guys are in alignment in that way. Correct. Yep. So at this point, are you, now that you've kind of over the years, you've realized how important that is, are you doing that within the hiring process? Like in the interviews, are you talking about their future goals and seeing if that's in alignment with what you guys are looking for? Yeah, so we have our HR department is the one who's doing a lot of that. Right now I have, on the Rosalato side, I'm, I'm more of a CVO, so just working on the vision and the strategy uh, on like higher level things. We have our CEO, we have a COO, CFO in the company. They handle a lot of the day-to-days. Um, but I come in a lot for strategy and, and big vision things where like literally just two hours ago, we were talking about the org chart. I got to let everybody know your org chart is always changing. That's another tip I would say is start working on the org chart, even if it's only two of you, because the more clear you are on the org chart, the more visible it is for people as they're growing with the business, the easier it is. It's much harder to go back and work on an org chart when you haven't established it in the first place. Um, I've lived and learned that, that tough lesson. And so when you say org chart, what exactly do you mean by that? The organizational chart. So like the roles in the company, like the C-level executives, the middle management, upper management, uh, the, the supervisors in the field, the technicians that are in the field, who reports to who, uh, more clear job descriptions. As much as you think you have a clear job description, I guarantee you that person still doesn't know exactly what they're supposed to do every single day. So it... It becomes a little, you know, just I can't stress enough to be mindful of the org chart. Again, to your point, I didn't have one for the first five years of our company uh, just because I was in it. I was just in it every single day. And I think that's the how us in the cleaning industry, especially in the service based industry, we're always in it. So we're not worried so much about org chart Org chart is like, oh, in the future, I'll work on that. But yeah, organizational chart is the foundation of every role in the company and how they can grow or who reports to who and like what the structure is of the organization. Okay. And so for the viewer that's watching this video that let's just say they have four team members, but their goal is to scale and eventually get to the point where they have, you know, dozens, maybe even hundreds of team members. Should their organizational chart be based on their current structure of the business or should it be based on future projections? And that's kind of something for them to grow into. Both. So have one for today. But then you should have one for like a year from now or two years from now. Always have one for a year ahead or two years ahead. 
Okay. So even at this point, do you guys have one that shows what you guys currently have, which you said is always changing, which makes a lot of sense, but then also something for longer term. So you have an idea of where you're looking to go. Yep. That's exactly. Yeah. So we have a three year org chart, an org chart today. So we have an org chart for today. We're working on one for three years from now. So we always, we're trying to follow this book. It's called the, the three hag way. It's like same thing as EOS traction. Um, everything's in like three year increments. So that's kind of the structure we're trying to follow right now. Gotcha. Okay. No, that makes sense. Well, cool. So something you had also mentioned is that your current role within the company is really focused on vision and probably, uh, you know, bigger picture tasks that help really move the needle for the company. You mentioned one of the biggest needles for you guys right now is starting to invest and just put more energy into, uh, you know, marketing, digital marketing, things like that. Can you kind of share so in the past your approach for scaling was offering more services to the same people and that's obviously helped you guys grow a ton what's your strategy to go from you know 19 ish 20 million per year to like you said this year you're going to do 26 and whatever your future goals are for yourself like what's the i guess the next biggest needle mover for you guys the our ideal client profile right it's sh- our the people that we want to do business with and work with on the rosalato side is shifting because we We know the type of client that we want to grow with now and like the footprint that we're going to need in order to monitor and manage quality and like effectiveness of the teams. So we're shifting on who we want to work with. So by doing that, we actually have the ideal client profile that we want to go after. So as we build a new business development plan and we go to market to to do marketing, to do inbound or outbound strategy, it's going to be to target those kind of clients versus just casting a big, a wide web or a net. We want to be specific and go after the. I'd rather win two or three new accounts every month than win 40 because the two to three are the ones that I want to work with and build with. Mm, okay. And what does that, I guess, what does that customer avatar kind of look like compared to maybe in the past you've had some clients that you're trying to move away from and focus on a certain type of customer avatar? Can you kind of break down what that customer avatar looks like? Oh, yeah, man. Pretty simple. Just five days a week, eight hours a day. Type of type of facility, so that may be you know a, a thirty thousand square foot facility. That may be a hundred thousand square foot facility. Depends on the scope of work, but minimal at least to the point of it's five days a week. We service it eight hours a day. You know anywhere from four to eight hours. I I'd, I'd loosen up to four, just because th- that's great work for our employees, and it allows us to recruit better if it's accounts that are that kind of um, frequency. Oh, okay. So essentially a facility that would allow you guys to have a crew there full time. And that's essentially all they do is working on that specific facility. I'm sure they become very, like very familiar with that facility. You know, the people there, they build great relationships by just really honing in on that one client. Correct. Yeah, man, it's been tough. Like some of the smaller clients we deal with because we've cared about volume for such a long time. Uh, They're coming and going and they're getting in the car, they're driving, they're getting in the car, they're driving, they're working here for one hour, there for two hours. Uh, you you make yourself set up for people to to maybe churn and employees to be like, man, this is tough. Where if you're at a place for four to five to eight hours, that's much better for the employees. So we, we're really trying to figure out what is best for the team members because we got to be empathetic to them when they're in the field. What would I want to do? And I know I liked to stay at one place and, and get to know the people and grow a relationship. Yeah, that's another thing too. simplicity scale. So even on the employee side, if they can just focus on one place, go to the same place every day and just have a very routine daily workflow, I'm sure the job satisfaction is is just much better because they know what to expect every day. My biggest takeaway from this call would be two main things. One is relationship building and just really trying to, you know, you guys haven't invested much in your marketing, but you're getting yourself out there. Even when you're not thinking about marketing, you're talking to people about what services you provide, you're building the relationships, and that's obviously compounded over the years. And then the second thing, which obviously also supported that a lot was technology. You guys are standing out so much because you guys are so technology advanced compared to other companies. So having those two in hand without like that third trifecta being the digital marketing, you guys grew this much. Once you throw in digital marketing, I mean, you guys are probably gonna blow up. But those two things, a lot of people don't put much attention into, but if they do, a lot of people focus on marketing on these other two things. With all three of these things in place, I mean, they can build you know a business of your size and maybe even more than that in the future. Hundred percent, man. 
Totally agree. Awesome. Well, I know we're kind of short on time now. So at this point, I just want to say I really appreciate you for hopping on. This was super valuable. And I know a lot of people watching this, a lot of them do commercial work just on smaller scale. So I think this will be super valuable to them. And even for the people focusing on residential work, a lot of the stuff you talked about is still relevant and still, you know, implementable for them. So with that being said, for anyone that does want to, you know, learn a bit more about you, get some more value from you, I know you put out a lot of content. Where could they learn a bit more about you and, you know, your, your current uh, endeavors? Yeah, man. Uh, my, I got a website, rickyrigolato.com. Uh, on LinkedIn, it's under Ricky Rigolato as well. Uh, Instagram, at Ricky Rigolato as well. Everything's Ricky Rigolato. And then, uh, yeah, check out our podcast too. It's Cleaning and Cocktails. Um, and then, yeah, my the company name is Rosalato. Or of the cleaning company, and then our software is getroute.com. If anyone wants to check him out, search up his name and you'll probably find him pretty easily. But yeah, like I said, Ricky, I really appreciate you hopping on. This was super valuable. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate you.